Oh, there it is. Miley Cyrus, looking back to her younger years, used to be young on BBC Radio Oxford. It is 20 past 11 right now. Of course, it's Friday, and that means one thing. There are a load of new movies out today. So, that is where we enlist the help of our movie critic, Van Connor, to come on and talk about two of the new movies that are out today, because he gets to see them well before we do, and he gives his honest opinion. Good morning, Van Connor. How are you, my friend? Well, I didn't spend three and a half hours in traffic like yourself, so I'm, I'm feeling quite good, Mr. Ball. I, I, oh. you know, congrats on that. You did an amazing job. Oh, it was it was a busy one yesterday, to say the least. I'm looking forward to oh. kicking my shoes off and enjoying a nice, relaxing weekend with an, a, a movie or two while I've got my little boy. So um, there are lots of new movies out today. You've chosen two to talk about. So where do you want to start? Bowling Shoes? Bolan Shoes, which is a new drama. This is the feature directorial debut of actor turned director Ian Paulston Davies. Uh, and it, uh, it stars Liam Best Tim, and Timothy Spall. I think there's a small supporting role in there for uh, Matthew Horn, of all people, oh. uh, as well. And uh, this takes place in the 75, it, it, on what would have been the 75th birthday of Mark Bolan. You've got a, a woman who's dealing with uh, trauma stemming from a childhood incident uh, involving a coach trip from the, the care home that she and her her brother were, were residents of uh, they went to see T-Rex perform and on the way back have, have had something of an accident. And there's some mystery some ambiguity surrounding this but she's not seen her brother since really, since then and on what would have been the 75th uh, birthday of Mar Bolan, she happens upon him as now played in his adult incarnation by Timothy Small. He's sort of a wacky character who's doing, who's got the ball sticks, he's entertaining the crowds kind of thing. And uh, they start to reconnect, and of course this reconnection brings her back into his life and, and you know, forces her to, you know, address that long lingering trauma head on. I've got a clip for you. I often wondered, you know, if I'd recognise you if I saw you again. I'd rather stay here and have a laugh at my mate Jimbo here. Been someone else, Jimmy. Are you gonna be Penny or Sadie? You can't be both. I've been lying to you. I have no idea what's going on, but whatever it is, I can take it. I'm so, so sorry that you've suffered alone for so long. Is there much of a take on, on the music side of this, seeing as it starts, you know, with the concert, T-Rex, etc.? Has it got a good soundtrack or does it focus more on kind of the emotional sides? It has got the songs. It has got yes. the records. It's got it's got the three T Rex songs anyone can name. I like Put it that way. You, you know the yeah the three that everyone can name. They're all in there, obviously. <laughs> now, funny story about this one. A friend of mine uh, is working from working from my place at the minute, and I, I was watching the link for this movie, and he genuinely, without no hint of irony whatsoever, just genuinely asked, "Is this a Mike Lee film?" And I said, oh, yeah, because it's quite dour and it's got Timothy Spall in it. So I can see why you'd think that. But no, it's not a Mike Lee film because those have charisma. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this does not. This is, I mean, don't get me wrong. This is absolutely what this is. This is an actor's debut feature directorial effort, like through and through. Like on paper, this is what you'd get. When you when you say that to someone, this is what they're envisioning. Uh, very much an actor's piece, you know, and I say actor specifically. Like, very much one of those. Right. Absolutely goes in every predictable direction you could think. It's like I say, a Mike Lee film without the charisma. You know, read into that what you will. I found it quite dire, dour and uninvolving, not dire, but dour and uninvolving. Like, within five minutes of starting this, you know exactly where this is going. I, I also think some of the cinematography leaves a lot to be desired, particularly the night stuff, which is quite unintelligible. There's a, a, pr a prolonged sequence with Spall in particular that's set at night, which you can barely make out what's happening, uh, which, again, took me out of it. Not a great one. I mean, I can see, hats off to them for, like, the title and, like, the T-Rex connection because that's going to get more bums on seats than just a trailer for the movie would. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And there's nothing worse than a movie that you can predict the whole way through. It just takes the okay. excitement away. So, um, all right. Well, if you want to make your own mind up, is that a streamer or is that in the cinema? That is in cinemas from today, Bolan Shoes. Bolan Shoes. All right. Um, okay. Talk to me about Outpost then. I mean, to me, that sounds like quite an exciting title that draws me in. 
Well, you know, because it's one of those titles that gets used so damn often yep. for every other movie. Like, there's, a, there's a billion movies called Outpost, including, I mean, I kept getting it confused with Overlord from 2018, which is an amazing, it's like Wolfenstein the movie. I love that one. Uh, but this is the feature directorial effort. This is out on, on digital now. Uh, this is the, uh, the the feature directorial effort of uh, Joe LaTrulio, Boyle from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, stars his real-life wife, uh, Beth Dover, as another woman escaping, you know, traumatic past. Uh, in her case though, she's gone to, she's basically taken up for the summer as the sole resident of one of those wooden outposts that like the Americans have on a hilltop that overlooks the forest and her job is to keep an eye out for forest fires to alert the authorities and phone in any smoke that you see or anything like that. But, you know, the isolation of this setting you know, starts to, starts to mess with her head and the trauma that she's trying to escape just comes flooding to the surface near immediately and starts her wondering just what's real is something actually happening to her or, or is this all in her mind and how's this tie into you know the various disparate characters who themselves are quite isolated up there and as they start to come into her world i've got a clip for you just to set the madness of what you're about to ensue the last one was predictable this one is not so you got no water wi-fi or plumbing but you got electricity like i said the heater's right there and the wood stove if you need it Okay. And the garbage? No, oh, Hal at the store lets us dump it in the back of his truck. Kate, you okay? No, yeah. Routine is key. You have needs that. Three months is a long time. So, be on that radio seven sharp. Scope, lunch, second report, supper, maybe a book, then bed. Rinse and repeat. Stick to the routine. Yeah, stick to the routine. I've got a feeling that this does feel to me like it'll be a really good suspense thriller. It's got that sort of scene set there. It, do you know what? It, I, if I was going to compare it to anything, it's kind of like, imagine The Shining, but very idyllic oh. and set, you know, with this great forest, you know, redwood kind of forest background. But it's, 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 you know, it's I thought this was really good. Um, comedians do generally do very well in the horror genre. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for Bill Hader to have his turn. Um, you look at like Jordan Peele, for instance. This obviously, this is not quite Jordan Peele great, but it's very good. And I say, I don't make that, The Shining comparison lightly. Uh, there's a great supporting role in there for Dylan Baker as well. I think most people remember as, as Peter's university professor, Doc Connors, in the Spider-Man movies, in the, in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, you know, the guy who would have been the lizard in a better world. Um, great performance there, but Beth Dover in the lead, really good. And this is, this is not one for the squeamish, we'll say. So, I mean, there are some twists and turns, but don't watch this over dinner and uh, <laughs> don't watch if you're squeamish, all I'll say. <laughs> well, I mean, that sounds like a really good weekend movie, actually. Outpost on digital. So how can we watch that now, then? What platform's it on? You'll find that you'll find that in your digital stores. That's in your Sky store. You can get that on you know your Amazon stores, etc. Right. You know, anywhere okay. you can buy and rent movies. But uh, yeah, we've all got the smart boxes with a billion apps now that we can you know buy. Because obviously the big ticket this weekend is is Barbie because that's out on digital uh, this weekend as well. But obviously we reviewed that already. So yeah. but yes, Barbie I think is going to be getting a lot of. Uh, it's going to get a whole new wave of love I think after this weekend. The shops will be selling out of pink paint once again this weekend. <laughs> um, amazing. Thank you so much, Van. And Outpost, have a look for it if you fancy it. Um, it's got, got good marks from Van Connor. And uh, we shall speak on Friday next week with more movies. Do you know what we've got to look ahead for? I am very, very happy to say that next week, my friend, we're getting the return of The Expendables. And I'm such a meat-headed action movie fan, an action movie junkie, that yeah. I just can't wait. You you pour some... Megan Fox in an Expendables movie? That sounds so terrible, I have to see it. I can't wait. <laughs> we'll see what you think to that then on Friday next week. Until then, have a lovely weekend, Van. Till the next time, Gritta. Thank you very much. Right. Let's get this on Duran Duran, Ordinary World. Of-